In this video, we're going to focus on the manual stitch tool. And the manual stitch tool is very different than the other digitizing tools. And the reason that is is because it, everywhere that you click, the needle is going to go down on the machine. So you don't just create a line and then have the software fill it in with stitches based on like a specific stitch length or something like that. Instead, it's only going to drop a stitch wherever you click on the screen. And that's what um, makes it a very different type of a tool. And But it's very powerful at the same time. It's something that I use quite often, actually, when digitizing design, especially if I'm doing something that is really small. Like um, you're doing eyes, and let's say, or a little dot. Um, sometimes you can't create that as a satin stitch like you usually would want to maybe because it's so small and you have to manually create those stitches. So that's um, that's how I utilize the manual stitch. And to do things like this tiny lettering that is if I get the ruler here, you'll see that this is only three millimeters in height. This is about the smallest you ever want to go. and to give you an idea of how small this is, I'm zoomed in 899%. So if I um, zoomed out to 100%, you'll see that that's very, very small. So um, that's the other time that I would utilize the manual stitch is doing small letters. And I'll show you a little bit about that. So we're also going to look at um, the editing features in this video because there's not much that you can do with the manual stitch. So first of all, where is the manual stitch? Well, it's in the digitizing tools. And the main way that we've always accessed the digitizing tools is up here in the top center. It's the first icon when you click the digitizing tools tab and it's called the manual stitch. If you have nothing selected on screen and you have the floating toolbar active, you can click the same icon right here and you can select the manual stitch by clicking that icon. And you'll see that um, I do utilize um, the crosshairs when I digitize. It just really helps to line things up. So how this tool works is I left click to start and now everywhere that I click is where a stitch is going to be dropped. So if I go too far, like, um, you know, going like 17 millimeters and I right click, we'll see what happens here. So, um, let me get this into a little bit lighter of a color, hopefully that you can see it a little better. And I'm going to turn on the stitch points here. So I know you probably can't see the stitch points um, on your screen through the video, but there's one right here, right here, 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 and here. So basically that is everywhere that I clicked on the screen is where a stitch point went. So there are varying stitch lengths here. So let's just get the, the ruler out and take it off 3D view and you can see those points better. And if I click here, I have 1.6 millimeters between this one and this one. I have 4.7 millimeters between these two. Between these, I have 5.2. Uh, 1.8, 8.1, which is really too long, 7.4, which is really too long, and this one won't even stitch because it's 17.3 millimeters. Um, it can't go that long. Um, but so what we have going on here that we have to be very careful with is that we have to know the rules and how far we can actually go between points. If you're using the manual stitch tool, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. Like creating something that's over eight millimeters long, that's just that's just a really long stitch. It's not that you can't do it. Basically, you can do anything up to about 12 point, I believe it's like 12.1, um, and if you go over that, your machine will actually not even stitch it. Instead, it will drop the needle come up, trim, move to the next point, drop it down, trim, move to the next one. It will not actually create that stitch. It's too long for the machine. So 
Um, and basically when you're dealing with a satin stitch, you only go seven millimeters wide. So the longest you would ever want to go is like maybe seven millimeters. But I, I actually, I think, um, you want to keep it around five at the longest five to maybe six. Um, and so you have to make sure that your, your rulers are in millimeters when you're using this so that when you click, you can see it, it tells me the length. I'm at 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1.3. So you can just like kind of see, oh, that's 8.3. I don't want to go that long. I want to go maybe about five at the at the longest. So use the um, the uh, measurements to your advantage that are attached to your cursor as you're using the tool. So th some of the things that I will do, um, just so you know, is uh, I might bring up a, a circle here and I might make this, you know, three millimeters. This is about one millimeter, so that's pretty, pretty small, three millimeters. This, um, let's go ahead and duplicate this. And we're just gonna focus on this really quick here. And I'm going to convert this to a um, satin stitch. And let's go ahead and let's make this, um, both of these, about half the size here. This is something that you commonly will see when you're um, kind of digitizing uh, and you're zoomed in. You'll see like this, um, you'll create a satin stitch and you'll see that it, it looks very um, odd or it doesn't look like it's creating like a circle. That's because it's so small. And, and it really, um, you can do this one. This one isn't too bad. Sometimes it'll get even smaller and you'll just see that it starts to really like that. I mean, it just, what are you going to do with that? And, um, so you can see that this height is about 1.5. That's like the shortest stitch length you, you want to create. So what you'll do in this kind of a situation is instead you'll use the manual stitch tool. And the thing you have to keep in mind as well with the manual stitch tool is that there is no ability to create a tie in or a tie off lock stitch. So you have to create those yourself manually. So if I'm going to do something like this, this is 1.5 millimeters. I'm going to create my own. I'm going to create my own, um, tie in and tie off lock stitches. So what I would do is I'd come up about 0.3, about 0.3 millimeters is um, kind of the, the distance that you use. And I'm gonna go two up and one back, all the way back. So this is gonna create a lock here. So now I can start digitizing it. And so if I was gonna do like a, um, a circle or a dot, what I would do is I would come all the way up because that's 1.4 millimeters. I'd come over to here, here, um, and I would basically just create a, a little star. Um, and then I would do another tie off stitch. And by doing something like that, you can see it creased out. Now this one wasn't a very good one, I will admit. Um, but you can do this cause it's so small. You can literally do it as, as basically just you know, a star. So, I mean, you can do your couple stitches like this. You could come up over and do it basically as a little star here. And, and you can create that little dot and it will actually stitch out and look really well. Like again, this is 184%. So you can see that I am really, um, that's still really, really small. And that's about the smallest you can make it because I'm utilizing like about a 1.4 millimeter stitch length there, but that's how you can utilize it. The other way is, you know, like tiny stitches, or if you're making your own lock stitches, you can do that. And just to want to point out too, you know, you can see a lot of gap here between like on this star, but this is again, when you're zoomed out and when you actually create this in the machine, it's going to look like a dot. It's not going to look like it's really open on the ends. 
because that's 800%. You can see it, it really kind of starts filling in. So just want to point that out because a lot of people get nervous when they see that kind of stuff and you really shouldn't be. So um, when you're zoomed in that far. So I'm going to grab the manual stitch and I'm not going to digitize this whole thing. If you're a part of the digitizing master class, um, there is a whole lesson on doing tiny lettering and it's one of my favorite lessons. But again, um, I'm going to do the word tiny and basically the whole idea is you have to go over each um, letter twice each each section twice and only twice and so you do the shortest route over and then you come back and you fill in the gaps um, I know that probably doesn't really make much sense but let's go ahead and zoom in here to the word tiny I'll grab my manual stitch and I have to create my own um, you know my own lock stitch so I'm gonna come all the way up to the top of this letter T because that's three millimeters tall so I'm gonna go about 0.3 millimeters over do a couple of those and then I'm going to come back on itself and then you'll see that this is about um, one millimeter here all the way across is about two now I will drop one in right here and come here and then I'm gonna do a couple small stitches because I want it to drive into the fabric and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to come down here about halfway and go to the bottom and come back up um, usually a lot of times I, I'll talk about just taking the shortest path over but this is a really kind of a small letter here so um, but now I will kind of focus on going the shortest distance that I can across so I'm dropping one about halfway in between because it's three millimeters total so half of it is 1.5 so it kind of gives you an idea of like that's like the stitch length you want to kind of keep so um, taking the shortest you know path here this is basically it I'm gonna right mouse click and I did do this one but I've gone over these areas once this one I've gone over twice I came down and back up so this letter is finished so now what I'm gonna do is work my way back and I'll even change the color here and so to go back I will come up that finishes this one at twice that's once that's twice this finishes this one twice because it's already gone once before and then this one will be twice 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 once once twice twice you kind of get the idea there and then this, I'm just coming over on this one I'll come over to here that's twice that's once once twice twice and then this is twice as well come back to the beginning and then I'll do my little lock stitch and right click and I've just created the word tiny using manual stitch tool and like I said there's a video on how to do that and I go more into why we do things the way you do it in the digitizing master class so that is the manual stitch tool it's used for very fine detail creating your own lock stitches or just creating anything that, that you can't really accomplish using one of the other digitizing tools it's a crucial tool and it's very important to know how to use it if your software didn't have that tool you would you would really struggle to do certain things as you learn how to digitize so uh, make sure you play around with it and we'll see you in the next video oh before I go I almost left before uh, showing you a couple things here we, I wanted to talk about the properties because there's not much that you can do with a lock stitch so if I go to this word tiny that second part of it basically all you can do is do a start command or an in command and those are basically is it gonna jump is it gonna trim you know you don't actually really change these much you might do a jump but um, you can't do a lock stitch you can't change stitch links you can't do anything like that the only thing you can do is this start and in command of basically a jump trim stopped frame out um, and you could change the size of it by just making it larger in 
the transform box but that's the only things that you can do now you can select it and you can go um, it's kind of it's kind of tricky you can't just use the shape tool you have to go to the stitch tool and if you click on the stitch tool now I can click and I can drag some of those points I could turn the points on so you can see them but you have to be able to find them and you can click and drag them this is the way that you can edit a manual stitch so that's about it and we'll see you in the next video